Patrick McGovern was one of the original tech pioneers, and a new book tells his story. I'm Tanya Hall for ZDNet and Tech Republic, and joining me is Glenn Rifkin. He's a writer, author, and New York Times contributor. Welcome, Glenn. Hi, Tanya. Thanks for having me. So give us a quick summary of your resume. Oh, wow. Well, let's see. I've only been doing this for about 40 plus years uh, as a business journalist. Um, been writing for the New York Times for nearly 30 years uh, in one capacity or another. Written about 12 books, published about 12 books. And I have written about um, all aspects of business from technology to leadership, uh, marketing, small business across the spectrum. So, you know, I've been around a long time and I've written so many words, Tanya, I couldn't even count them all. <laughs> Your latest book, Future Forward, uh, Leadership Lessons from Patrick McGovern, just hit the shelves. How did you come about knowing Patrick? Well, I actually worked at IDG for the publication called Computer World from 1983 to 1990. And during that time, uh, as all the employees in the company, um, I had a chance to meet Pat. Uh, I got to know Pat pretty well during that time and actually ended up working for him uh, individually after I left the company in 1990. I did about two or three years where I was a speechwriter, ghostwriter for him. So I got to know him even more. And um, he is bigger than life. He was bigger than life, certainly within the company. So when he was in the room, he just filled it up. Pat was one of the original digital disruptors. What were some of the most significant accomplishments? Well, I think, you know, every industry needs its storyteller. And Pat McGovern had the vision to see that this industry, uh, the, the nascent information technology industry, was going to need its story told. And so he set out to do that in, a, you know, really spectacular fashion. He started in 64 with IDC, which became the research arm of the company and is still there. Uh, but in 1967, he saw an opportunity for a weekly newspaper to, to chronicle this um, incredible industry that was underway. And um, he founded Computer World against all uh, reason. It was a small uh, industry at that time. But Computer World went on to become the Bible of the industry. And it was uh, the beginning of several hundred publications that came out all over the world. He was also a visionary in that he put the word international in the company from the beginning. This was before he ever got on a plane. But he said, this is going to be a global industry. People want to know about this stuff all over the world. So he was, he was quite an amazing man. Future Forward is part biography, part leadership lessons, lessons like decentralizing, having a mission that matters, and encouraging an entrepreneurial culture. And those are standard fare in today's best companies. Explain loose, tight leadership. So when McGovern decided that this decentralized um, philosophy was going to really be the foundation of this growing company, uh, he had to think about how, how could we uh, make this work in a pragmatic way. So when you think about loose tight, um, there was in fact a very big time uh, business leader named Harold Janine in the 60s and 70s who kind of epitomized that loose tight method. He went around the world buying companies. He bought like 300 companies or something to that effect. So you have this sense of each local organization is uh, you know on its own bottom it has to do its own thing but on this at the same time the company has to retain some version of control some firm oversight in which uh, somebody has to have the last word and McGovern was that last word so it was loose in the sense that these folks had uh, incredible leeway to do their thing in their local markets but they had to meet the numbers they had to answer to those numbers and if the numbers were not being met you know, Pat took action and, and heads did roll sometimes. Why is identifying the warriors important? Well, I think that's become, again, in, in this day and age, we kind of know it as a as sort of a de facto rule of certainly entrepreneurial companies. When Pat was doing his thing early on, um, you know, it wasn't clear that you could just look inside your organization and find just amazing people who you could uh, send out there on the front lines and do their thing. But he he believed deeply in that. So in order to make that work, he had to identify these movers and shakers. Most of them were really young. Some 
you know, just out of high school, never even went to college. And he said, um, is this person a warrior? Is this person somebody who's going to be willing to take risks, who's going to take, uh, you know, the next step beyond what most employees would do? And, and he was really adept at that. He made mistakes, by the way. There were sometimes he would choose a leader in a, in a certain geography who turned out to be absolutely the worst. And he would usually, in that case, send in one of his lieutenants to get rid of that person. He was not big on confrontation. But often, he was able to find and spot early on the young leaders in the company. He even had a, a regular gig that he did internally once a year where he would identify, say, the 25 most promising young people within the organization. He'd bring them together. He would extol the virtues of each one individually without looking at a note. He had a photographic memory, so he remembered everything about anybody that he ever met. It was kind of spooky in a way. <laughs> and uh, and that was how he um, really pushed IDG into a global organization successfully. Having those warriors is critical. Why is optimism an important part of innovation? Uh, you know, there's been so much said about optimism in, in recent years. I don't know if you know the company Life is Good. Um, they're a Boston-based sort of apparel company. Their whole logo is about optimism. Optimism is the fuel. Uh, Pat was just naturally that way. He, he, you know, you can't fake that. And he believed um, his signature phrase was the best is yet to come. And he would tell, he would end every meeting that way. And he would just make it clear to people that hard times are good times. The a, a pessimist is just going to hold things up. The glass is half empty. Decisions are not going to get made. Feet are going to be dragged. But if you're an optimist and you believe the future is full of promise, uh, it changes the whole environment, and it really did have an impact in, inside of IDG. It, it, it talked to anyone who worked there over these 50 years, and it, it was really a game changer. What attributes do you find in the best innovators and disruptors? Well, you know, in Pat's case, the uh, ability to accept risk, live with risk, I mean, these are not, you know, unknown factors in, in any entrepreneurial uh, environment. but an innovator has to be willing to go to the place that most of us don't go. You know, we would say, well, that could work. Maybe it won't work, but I like my job. I like where I'm at and, you know, I'm going to be safe here. Uh, the innovators just, that, that's not part of their DNA. They go, they have to take it to the next level. Pat always did that. He did that in China in 1980 when no Western publisher was even dreaming of setting up shop in China. He went in there. And even his board of directors didn't know he was going to do this. He just did it. And he set up a joint venture with the, the communist government to, to publish what became China Computer World um, at a time when U.S. and China diplomatic relations had just been reconnected. And so he was in there first. Uh, big risk. Uh, didn't know what would come of it. Turned out to be one of the major um, success stories in all of IDG's history and still is to this day. Glenn Rifkin, writer and author and New York Times contributor and author of the book, Future Forward. So exciting. This is a great story of uh, Patrick McGovern. Uh, if somebody wants to connect with you, Glenn, maybe they want to get a copy of your book. How can they go about doing that? Well, the easiest way, there's a website for the book, www.futureforwardbook.com. We couldn't get futureforward.com for some reason. Um, but that on, on the website, you'll have all sorts of good stuff. There's videos, there's excerpt from the book, and there's uh, links to, to order the book. Thanks again, Glenn. And if you want to catch more of my interviews, you can do that right here on ZDNet or Tech Republic. Or maybe go to my website, tanyahall.net. I've got links to all my social sites. Thanks for watching.